Ben here to chat again. Yeah, for this time we're not doing Game of Thrones. Yeah, we're actually a lot more positive this time around. Yeah, what we wanted to have a chat about was everything we know about Quentin Tarantino's Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So we've just watched the trailer. Mm -hmm. um, we know that it, um, it aired at the Cannes Festival, got a six minute stand innovation. They so loved like, it. They loved it. Do we love it or do we expect to love it? Yeah, so I think Quentin Tarantino um, filmed particularly the trailers as well. Um, it's a little bit hard to go by because mm. his movies are so in depth and you can only get certain aspects of the story in a trailer. And there's such an artistic representation of events that generally the trailer is also a reflection of that. Yeah, it's almost like a mini movie, but it has um, a, a mind and body of itself. Mm. Um, but I really like the trailer. Um, I think, you know, it, it feels like a, a normal Tarantino movie in that it's cool, um, yeah. it's nice to look at. Um, it's got some really high profile actors and it looks like they're doing quite a good job as well. I think that's the main thing here. We have the most amazing array of actors and to come together all on one film set, particularly given Brad Pitt's um, media articles in the last couple of years and the fact that he'd uh, broken up with Angelina Jolie, having trouble seeing his kids, the divorce proceedings, all that sort of stuff. And now we're kind of seeing a little bit of a Brad Pitt comeback. I don't know if there's been a movie that you can remember recently that he's kind of made his comeback with back into Hollywood. Inglourious Bastards. No, that Fury. was before Angelina Jolie's Fury? divorce. Maybe Fury? I don't know. I feel like this one's the mainstream yeah. one. Or, yeah. Or maybe like just something where... It's, it's Brad Pitt coming back, not just doing a random movie. I think it's a good point, only because um, as a bit more of a gossip lay person, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't really kind of following his divorce with Angelina Jolie and how that's impacted um, him churning out movies or not. So I think that's it. That's a good point. Yeah, I think um, particularly with Leo DiCaprio as well. Yeah, so I think, look, them working together, it's really good. You've never um, seen it before, I don't think. Yeah, I, I, I already like the feel. It looks like they have um, a good... Uh, Rapport? I'd say good chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, particularly given that, you know, one's the, the actor who's a little bit down um, in the dumps in terms of he thinks his career, his star's kind of fading. Mm -hmm. um, but the other guy's his stuntman. So, you know, he, he's quite cool. He's like nice and relaxed. Um, I really like the feel of it. And I like the feel um, that this is a movie that is in and around... Um, the Charles Manson um, mm -hmm. and um, murders. murders, but it's not about them. Yeah, well, I don't know whether, like, how much they're actually going to go into it. I know that Sharon Tate's sister, so Sharon Tate is one of the women who was murdered by the Charles Manson group. Um, so that means Charles Manson and his bevy of loyal followers. Yeah, just, yeah, just his followers, yeah. And they basically went, I remember. Uh, reading that they went into the mansion or something. I think Roman Polanski was currently dating Sharon Tate and Sharon Tate was about eight months pregnant with his child and they um, stabbed her and some other people in her house to death. Um, and this, weirdly, is what Quentin Tarantino has decided to choose as his next project. Um, but it's it's considered it's affectionate, which yeah. is an interesting... And, and it's, a, it's an interesting take, too, which he, he kind of always does. Though There is some event, and often, not always, but often it's the movie around that event. So this is, um, for people that don't know, is that um, Rick Dalton is actually the neighbour of Sharon Tate in this. So we're kind of following mm -hmm. his life, but he's observing that as his star is waning, um, he's surrounded by these up-and-coming um, actors, and one of them is Sharon Tate. And that's, okay. and that's how it kind of follows. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, so do we think that um, he's actually a real-life person, or is this someone that Quentin Tarantino has uh, put in the movie? As I, I'm not sure if he's a real person, but what I will say is I think that he embodies um, a generation that's mm -hmm. kind of of movie stars that's been eclipsed by the younger um, generation that kind of captures that hippie generation coming mm -hmm. through. And I think that's quite interesting. It'll be, um, it'll be really cool to see that play out on the screen as well. Yeah, definitely. So Brad Pitt, so that was Leo DiCaprio's character, yep. Rick Dalton. Brad Pitt plays his longtime stunt double yep. named Cliff Booth. So both of them are together struggling to make it in Hollywood, yeah. as you mentioned. Um, but Rick's next-door neighbour, Sharon Tate, 
Yeah. And um, essentially what we're thinking is that it's going to be similar to Pulp Fiction. That's what they've yeah. talked about, the sort of same themes. I'm not sure exactly what that means. <laughs> is it going to be murders, the same themes? Well, um, I think oh, how I interpret it is I took it in, um, like I was saying before, in that it's, it's a movie that's around an event but not... There's not too much of it that's mm. specifically about the actual event. Yeah, so they've kept it a really closely guarded secret as to how um, the two characters actually intersect with the uh, Charles Manson murders themselves. Yep. So yep. perhaps Sharon Tate will be um, a bit of a side character. Well, they said so, and, and that's, that's an interesting one um, point that you raised. So um, people were already, um, you know, there's a little bit of a furore around um, one of the journalists asked um, Quentin Tarantino, you know, with Robbie, uh, with, sorry, Margaret Robbie in there, um, mm-hmm. she's a good actor, uh, she's playing Sharon Tate, and she doesn't have really many lines. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I think there was a hint that, you know, it was some type of sexist portrayal. Of course, like everything else you know, these we, days. Yeah, which is a little bit stupid given that he made a movie or two called Kill Bill that really? had a female, oh, my favorite. female um, <laughs> protagonist. It had um, a very kick-ass female protagonist. A largely, except for the big bad at the end, a largely um, female antagonistic group. As yeah, well. true. Um, true that. And I think um, so. So that was his view. He, um, Margot Robbie, had come out and said, "Look, I think again, um, what was kind of done with this is, is just kind of to show Sharon Tate's um, innocence, mm. and that's not just done through lines, but through scenes and how she portrays the character on screen." And I'm definitely getting a feeling from that. We watched the trailer. We're not really sure what it's about. Yeah. Um, but the way she comes across, I think she's going to be an excellent portrayal yeah. of Sharon, Sharon Tate. I've only known Sharon Tate from Valley of the Dolls, but yeah. definitely there's that beautiful um, 60s, 70s yeah. innocence about her, that long blonde hair and the high-waisted Daisy Duke type yeah. denim shorts. And I think the, the thing to remember with these as well, um, that people seem to forget, is that Quentin Tarantino is making a Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah. So it's the movie that he wants to make. Um, and it's to capture the, the feel and the story that he wants to tell. Um, and he's always said that a lot of this has always been inspired by the movies that he watched when he was growing up. Sure. So when we think back to what Hollywood would have looked like at that time, mm. it's largely kind of what he's representing. White male. It, 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 there's a lot, of, a lot of guys. There's always, you know, the guy's the hero yeah. um, that, you know, performs the impossible feat. He saves the damsel in distress. And that's not saying that anything other than that's what... Um, the time period that he's representing. Mm-hmm. And I think on that basis as well, this part of an era was also um, responsible for kung fu movies. And Yes, yeah, so I know you were really <laughs> excited um, that Bruce Lee um, mm-hmm. gets a piece in his, not Bruce Lee, real Bruce Lee, someone playing Bruce Lee. Yeah. Um, but again, that, that's kind of really cool because this guy um, that Leo is playing appears to be largely a western star or that kind of Hollywood macho Clint Clint Eastwood style yeah yeah yeah. less successful TV Clint Eastwood and again I think that represents how um, how the times are changing you've Mm. got the hippie movement coming through Mm -hmm. you've got um, you know different influences and different um, demands for movies so you know uh, martial art movies that was completely foreign um, let alone it's so, so in a foreign star mm-hmm. uh, so I think again I think it's going to be really cool how it comes together and it's a really good time period piece yeah so they're kind of they are based on I shouldn't say characters because some of them are actually real people, people but Bruce Lee for example did have a real life interaction with Sharon Tate in that he thought after Sharon Tate's death that potentially her beau Roman Polanski was responsible for the murder. Um, So that might be the interplay that they have, or it could just be something completely different. I don't know what to expect from Quentin. He could go completely off the rails, but I just think it's going to be, if anything, super cool. Yep. And Bruce Lee looks amazing in it. He looks just like how I imagined him to look. (laughs) So I've been a Bruce Lee fan for quite a while since I was a teenager. Yep. And loved his original movies, but also loved... Um, I think it was Jason Lee's portrayal of him in um, the dra- Dragon. Enter the, the Dragon. Bruce, oh no, yeah. yeah, Bruce Dragon the Bruce Lee story. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because Enter the Dragon's one of Bruce yep. Lee's actual Sorry, yep. things. But even that portrayal was amazing. So I'm interested to see how I think it's Mike Moe 
uh, well, we know, bodies, Bruce Lee. Well, we know Quentin Tarantino is a big Bruce Lee fan, like um, Kill oh, Bill. Of course. Um, you the know. beautiful uniform that she yeah, wears. Yeah, the, the yellow um, jumpsuit. When she kills the crazy 88, she's wearing yeah. Bruce Lee's, uh, what would you call it? Something jumpsuit. jumpsuit. Yeah, yellow jumpsuit. Yeah, I just can't think of what the, the word yellow is. Yellow jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, there's Al Pacino in it. Yeah. Dakota Fanning. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen much of Dakota lately, but apparently she's kind of blossomed into to this true actor. I know she was a child actor and it's often very difficult for them to make that break into actordom later on in life. Yep. They're not really so taking yeah, very seriously. So yeah, that transition from a child actor to an actual actor. Yeah, yeah. so um, apparently she's a powerhouse. Okay. This. So cool. awesome cast. And I know that Leo DiCaprio desperately wanted to play this so much so that he was willing to forfeit 50% of his going rate. So instead, what a generous of, man. instead of twenty million dollars, he's only getting ten million dollars. Oh, he's living on the poverty line. Yeah. <laughs> Lena Dunham's also in it, so she's playing one of the Manson troop. I didn't actually believe that. <laughs> and I think what this is kind of indicating to me that all these actors have actually made a conscious decision not to uh, play roles in other movies, and then have seen this script and just jumped on it. Well, I think there's kind of there's maybe two um, two yeah. class of actors here. So there's definitely um, like your Leo, Leos and maybe your Brads as well that have been waiting for a really good sh- script yeah, to, to come back into the scene. Yeah. And then you've probably got maybe more your Lena Dunham uh, type um, actors that um, are going to use this to springboard back into the fold mm-hmm. um, where they've kind of you know they've been waning for a while. And it makes me think of how John Travolta um, used Pulp Fiction. To go mm-hmm. from, you know, he used to be uh, very popular after, um, what was that? Saturday Night Fever, Grease. Grease, yeah. yeah. And, and then he kind of started to Died. fade into, yeah. the, and then, you know, it was Pulp Fiction that kind of made him come back into, um, you know, the limelight of, of movies. And yeah, he was cool again, kind of yeah. similar to Robert Downey Jr.'s comeback. Yeah. Um, and on that basis, Luke Perry, unfortunately, in his last role before he uh, died of a. Um, stroke or heart attack I think very recently so that's his last role um, he also plays Scott Lancer so I'm assuming it's just going to be a cameo role but that will be um, his final legacy I suppose as well cool. so what do you think Amy are you looking forward to it I am super looking forward to this the fact that they did have that six minute standing ovation that tells me something I don't think they're just pandering to Quentin Tarantino I think they're looking for um, some sort of excellent uh, script, some sort of excellent artistic direction, and the fact that they've called this something as good as his as his best scripts, that just having loved every single Tarantino I've seen, except for what was that one, The Hateful Eight? Hateful Eight, yeah. I wasn't super into that, but Inglorious Bastards, Kill Bill's uh, Volumes 1 and Jango 2. Jango Unchained. Yeah, Kill Bill Volumes 1 and 2 uh, is possibly my favourite movie yep. um, compilation of all time, so yep. Definitely pumped for this one. Yeah, I'm very excited for it. Um, I'm not as buoyed by the six minute stand innovation. I'm not usually a fan of um, the reviews that you know your Hollywood elite critics and actors give, um, and I, I think that's kind of borne out of my opinion of the last um, lot of movies that have won the Oscars. Um, so I don't take that with too, you know um, too heavily in terms of uh, swaying my opinion. However. Um, I love a, a, a Quentin Tarantino movie. I think it's got a quality um, cast. I think it looks like a really interesting story mm-hmm. and a unique perspective that he's offering. So I'm super hyped for it. Awesome. Well, it's currently sitting at 94% on the Rotten Tomatoes scale. So we'll be back next time to chat about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and what it ended up being. Yeah, like. after we've seen it. Ew. Ew. All right, see you guys later. Catch gotcha.